Yo, what's going on, E7 fam? Pat here, back with another video. And in this one, we're going to talk about the Forge Your Epic Gear event. Uh, and it says here, Season 1. So a number of you guys have asked me on Discord and on streams, like, hey, um, what should I take for this event? And so in this video, I'm going to break down what I think are the safest picks and then also give you some recommendations of my own. But before we do that, let's talk about what the event actually is. So for those of you who are newer and don't understand what this event is for, essentially, by playing the game, you will accrue points and you can spend those points to get two pieces of gear. One left side, which is a sword, helmet, or body piece, and then one right side, which is a necklace, ring, and then uh, a set of boots. And you get to choose the main stat for the right side pieces, but for both the left and right side pieces, you will get to choose the substats, and they start at max rolls. And every time you enhance them, they are guaranteed to be max rolls. The catch is that you could only put three enhances per substat. So that means certain substats, such as speed, are capped at 17. But for newer players who don't really have 17 speed as a substat on a lot of their pieces, this is a great opportunity for you to pick up a really strong piece of gear. It's also a really, really good chance for you to pick up a specific piece of gear for a character that you want to play. So a lot of people have been reaching out to me and saying, hey, Lionheart Sermia is my favorite character in the game. Is it okay to take a defense percentage ring like this? Or I want to use my Lone Crescent Bologna, but I really don't have good boots. Is it all right to take a pair of boots like this? Or, you know, I need a sword for my tank. Is it okay to take a sword like this? The answer to all those questions is yes. And I know that it might not be seen as optimal, right? Like some people will advocate, oh, you should just take a speed DPS ring because it's very rare. Um, and that is true. That's 100% true. But it, I personally believe that Epic 7 is a game that is played for enjoyment by people. And if, you know, not having that piece of gear is the difference between you playing a character like Lionheart Sermia or not, then I think you should probably take the Lionheart Sermia piece if that's what you really want to play. So that's the purpose of this event, right? It's either to get something that's quote unquote optimal if you're more of a competitive player, but if you're more casual and lax, just get the pieces for the characters that you actually want to play. So let's break down how this event works. So when you first come into it here, you will see this screen and you will see the participate button. The event lasts here. You can see the last day to start it is May 11th, right? Now, when you hit participate, you have 80 days from the time you actually hit participate to finish the event. So if you start it on May 11th, you have 80 days from then to finish the entire event. When you spend stamina and get reputation, specifically the weekly reputation, I believe, you will accrue points. Those points are used to basically enhance the substats on the piece of gear. But before you choose the substats, you actually have to choose the set, right? And you also have to choose the piece. At first, again, for part one, it will be sword, helmet, body. For part two, it will be necklace, ring, boots. So let's talk about sets in the current state of Epic 7. The best set, to the surprise of no one, if you've been actively playing the game and paying attention, is speed. Speed is the best set in all of Epic 7. If you are unsure of what you should take, I recommend taking the speed set. However, there are other sets that you can choose, uh, some better than others. For example, attack, in my opinion, is pretty bad mathematically in the current state of Epic 7 and needs a buff. Defense and health are solid options, uh, especially because most of the player base does not farm Golem. They're pretty good for certain characters' defense for a character like maybe Lionheart Sermia. Health, pretty good on certain tanks. Uh, crit is decent, but considering almost everyone can farm Wyvern, uh, and not too many people are using this. More people are favoring things like Penetration and Torrent. I don't really want to recommend it. Destruction is great for people that want to play Bruisers or more of a slower turn two style. Hit is a good set that is hampered by the fact that the maximum speed you can get on substats in this event is 17. Usually hit set pieces are basically some of the fastest pieces in on your account. Or they should because most openers want hit set to increase that effectiveness. And they also want speed. So it's very difficult for you to choose something like an effectiveness ring uh, and get the speed that you'd want to use at late game. But if you don't have, say, uh, 
17 speed on an effective strength. That is a decent option for you. Resist is good for Soul Weavers. Uh, Life Steal, uh, Counter, right? Immunity, these are all fairly good. Immunity or Unity is kind of a meme. Certain characters use it. I use it on things like Navy Captain Landy, but again, this one I probably would pass on. Uh, penetration, Protection, and Torrent are also all very good with Injury, Rage, and I think Revenge being a little bit more niche. Rage is good for newer players, but I think at that point, you'd be better off just developing an Azimatic team and trying to get serviceable Rage pieces. You don't ever really need perfect Rage pieces. So once you have the set that you want in mind, you move on and you're going to choose a left side piece. Right, first, and then the second time you go through the event, after you've claimed your first piece, you will get to choose again. Now, if you were unsure of what to take, take a helmet, and I'm explaining to you why. So, swords cannot have flat attack on them because that is the main stat, they cannot have flat defense, and they cannot have defense percentage. So, they are locked out of three substats, right? That they cannot have. Bodies cannot have flat defense attack percentage, or flat attack. So they are locked out of three substats. A helmet is only locked out of flat health, which means when you look at it mathematically, there are two more substats in the pool that a helmet can have than a sword or a body piece, which means that your helmet is statistically more likely to be worse in quality because, well, it's got more RNG inherently than a sword or a body piece. So if you are unsure of what to take, I would take a helmet. Now, if you take a look at the right side, there's pretty much almost equal RNG across the board, right? Uh, that said, I think the one that stands out to me the most is the boots. So boots, on average, from all of the viewers that I have helped in the past year or two since I've been doing E7 content, um, and like looking and talking to my friends and my peers in the space, most people, boots are their, on average, lowest equipment score piece. So taking boots with speed as a main stat with really good subs for your choice of a DPS or like a supporter is, I think, very, very important. Again, this piece, when you do things correctly, should come out to be about 100 to 103 equipment score. Just sort your box for boots by equipment score and tell me how many you actually have in the comments below, how many pairs of boots you have that are over a hundred equipment score. Like just as like a quick test real fast, I could go over here in game, right? And go over here to boots and sort by equipment score. Uh, and you can see very quickly, like when I get to about here, 99, uh, I have a hundred. So I have one, two, three, four, five pairs of boots. And three of those are boots that I got from things like labyrinth or uh, ancient inheritance. Whereas, you know, uh, conversely, like I could go to here, like I'm almost like two rows deep for 100 on swords, right? So it's a huge difference. All right, coming back to here, we have the select substat screen. This is where you're going to choose your subs. Ideally, you want to choose percentage ones as well as speed when you can. But there are some instances where flat stats are acceptable to take, although I would not enhance flat stats. And we'll talk about that at the end of the video when I break down what I think some of the best choices are for each individual slot. If you are looking for, again, the safe route, it's really hard to say no to a DPS helm on a speed set. So if you've gone speed set helmet, going something like speed, attack, crit chance, crit damage, which is what they have here in the example is fine. You go 17 speed, 16% critical hit chance, because that's all the second hardest stat to get in the game behind speed, and then just have the other two pieces be uh, max starting rolls. That's fine. Similar story for boots. You start on, like, say, speed boots with uh, speed set main stat. You could choose, like, uh, you know, max critical hit chance on it, right, which is, like, 16%, or it might even be more. It's uh, 6 to start, I believe, and then five for each roll so you could get 21 critical hit chance and then get like uh i would say 22 critical hit damage and then flat attack attack percentage that is a possibility that you could take so once you're good with that and you've locked in the four that you want you'll come to this screen where you will spend your points to enhance one of these per day so it takes 12 days basically i think to do the entire thing uh if i'm not mistaken 
Uh, no, actually, it's 20. It looks like it. 20 here. Enhanced to get a 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. So once you have 20, you can claim the actual piece. Um, and again, you get to level each of these up to a maximum of three times uh, for a total of, as always, five total rolls, right? So that is basically it. Once you have it, you are good to go. And then you can kind of redeem it. And once you have both pieces, uh, if you finish early, you get to just buy out stuff in this point shop. So that's the basic overview for the event. Let's spend the rest of the video by talking about some of the choices that I think are particularly good. And I'll show you guys the substats as well. So rather than rant for another 10 or 15 minutes, in this section of the video, I'm just going to let my editing do the talking for me and put up on the screen pieces of gear for DPS tanks, soul weavers, as well as a few others that I think are worth choosing. So feel free to pause the video at any time to read what's on the screen. Let's start by taking a look at the substats that you can have for each piece of gear and their starting values. And these values that I'm gonna put up here are the values for how much you get per enhance. Remember, you could only enhance a substat three times, so there are maximum values of what you can get, and I will put those up on your screen. I do think it is not worth enhancing flat stats ever, but I do recommend choosing flat stats in some pieces if it is correct to do so, and I'll point those out in the correct sections. First, let's take a look at DPS pieces, starting with the speedy DPS. Most of the time on these pieces, you're going to want to choose 17 speed and 16% critical hit chance with attack percentage and crit damage percentage as the last two substats. For bodies, you can't choose attack percentage, so you're going to have to settle with a filler stat, maybe say HP percentage or defense percentage. To me, this makes a body less of an ideal choice, but if you need it, feel free to choose it. The fact that Speed Set in particular has a fairly strong sword that you could get from Hell Raid or Nightmare Raid with not quite perfect, but nearly perfect substats makes it kind of a better choice for me, in my opinion, to choose a helmet, right? So if you're looking for a speedy DPS option, helmet is still my go-to. For right side pieces, Again, for a speedy DPS, it's pretty straightforward. Same subs most of the time, with the appropriate main stat being critical hit damage for a necklace, attack percentage for a ring, or speed for boots. Boots is still my pick here. For bruisers, you're going to have to adjust the sub stats for both your left and right side pieces to fit that specific character. For example, Martial Artist Ken doesn't really want any speed, and he always crits, so critical hit chance doesn't really help him. So you want things like attack percentage, health percentage, defense percentage, critical hit damage. But he might also want some effect resistance based on how your other gear plays out on him. So you're going to have to do a little bit of homework. Lone Crest and Bologna is a character that I am constantly being asked for help on. And a common sticking point that I always see from those asking for help is on the ring and the boots. Generally, it's best to take an attack percentage ring if you play this character on health percentage boots and vice versa. You can take an attack percentage ring that looks like this on your screen if you intend to pair it with a pair of boots that looks like these. If you take a health percentage ring, well, then you're going to want to pair it with boots that look like this one. Lionheart Sarmia is another character that I often get asked about. She's not quite the best now, in the face of C Phantom Politis, but she is a fan favorite. And again, I know a number of my viewers are going to want to take options for her. Here is a helmet and ring combination that you can choose for her if this is what your heart is dead set on. And I know a lot of you definitely are. Torrent set is another thing that I feel like I have to talk about, right? Most people don't have good torrent pieces yet. Genoa and Midnight Galilius are strong characters as I'm recording this video, so they might be the characters that you want to build for. Genoa's gear is, for the most part, the same as the speed DPS gear that we talked about. It's just going to be on Torrent as the main stat, or main set, I should say, rather than uh, speed set. Gala Lilius, though, is a little bit different. It's not too difficult to understand. The character always lands a critical strike, so she doesn't really want critical hit chance on her DPS pieces. So you should change critical hit chance with any speed DPS piece with either flat attack or effect resistance. And then go 17 speed and then dump the other two rolls into either attack percentage or critical hit damage percentage. 
I'd also be remiss at this point to not talk about an attack percentage necklace for a character like Senya, Huayong, Arunka, or perhaps Summertime Asaria if you are, say, maybe a cleaver. This is, in my opinion, a really rare piece, and it doesn't really show up on most people's accounts. So even though it's kind of limited, right, there's only a couple characters that can use it, this might be the thing that you are looking for, because again, it's so rare and so oddly specific. Generally, you're going to take attack percentage as the main stat on the necklace with speed and flat attack as subs. After that, you have your choice of health percentage, defense percentage, or in the case of a character like Senya, you could also take effect resistance, or in the case of a Seria, you could take effect this. It's kind of your choice, but overall, you're most likely going to be taking speed, flat attack, and then the safe pick would be health percentage and defense percentage. Finally, let's round out the video with some stat spreads for tanks and soul weavers. These, like DPS pieces, are going to be generally the same across the board. You're going to want to have at least two rolls in speed and then dump all the rest into either health percentage or effect resistance, depending on what you want out of the piece. And then obviously, you know, get either health percentage or ER as the third stat, whichever one you didn't dump it into, and then choose defense percentage or if you can't, something like flat health or flat defense, right? Another way you could play it is three in speed and then two in health or three in speed and two in ER. For right side pieces in particular, I would not choose a ring if you were trying to go for effect resistance as the main stat because, well, uh, Nightmare Raid does have pretty much a perfect Soul Weaver slash tank ring if you're looking for ER as the main stat. Similar uh, experience, I feel like, with the body on the left side as well. There is a fairly competent uh, immunity body that you can get from Raid if you are newer. And a lot of the bosses also drop resistance bodies. So, yeah, that's the one I probably would avoid uh, on the left side. If I had to choose one, though, for the pieces in particular, I would choose a sword because it is very rare for you in the wild to come across something with like 33% health, flat health, 13 speed, and like 9 ER. Like that is a very, very strong tank sword that I personally, that might actually be the piece that I take from this event because that's something that will have almost indefinite value for any tank that you play going forward. So that's my recommendation if you're a turn two player, it is to take the sword that looks like that. Otherwise, on the right side, I would just take speed boots that have either a ton of health, like three in health and two in defense with ER and like flat health accompanying it or like three in defense, two in health, flat defense or flat health and or defense and then ER, right? Same thing. That's just going to be an insane tank boot that you're probably going to always use from now until the end of time. So yeah, that's pretty much all of the stuff that I wanted to highlight in this video, and hopefully it helped you make a decision. Let me know down in the comments below what pieces you intend to take, or just hit me up on Discord if you have any more questions. My DMs are always open. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye now.